Phyllis Schlafly received her B.A. from Washington University in St. Louis, where she worked her way through college on the night shift, testing 30 and 50 caliber ammunition. She then received a master's degree from Harvard University. After the age of 50, she went to law school and received her law degree from Washington University in St. Louis. She founded Eagle Forum in 1972 to encourage the grassroots to be politically active. She led the 10-year battle to successfully defeat the ratification of the so-called Equal Rights Amendment. Phyllis Schlafly is the author of 20 books on such diverse topics as politics, national defense, the courts, feminism, and even a phonics textbook for children called First Reader. Her newest book, just released this month, is No Higher Power, Obama's War on Religious Freedom. Please welcome Phyllis Schlafly. Thank you very much, Anne, and good morning, students. There are a lot of good books about Obama, different aspects of his career, uh, but there wasn't one on a very important issue. And that's why I wrote this one, No Higher Power, Obama's War on Religious Freedom. On October 31st, 2008, Barack Obama said, we are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States. Few Americans realized how radical that was and what kind of transformation he planned. His goal is not merely to spread the wealth as he told Joe the plumber. He, his goal is to transform America from one nation under God, as we proudly proclaim in our Pledge of Allegiance, to a totally secular country where we're allowed to recognize no higher power than the federal government, especially the executive branch. When Obama moved into the White House, the groundwork for this campaign of secularism had already been laid by dozens of lawsuits filed by the ACLU and various atheist organizations petitioning supremacist judges to use the First Amendment to tear down all crosses and monuments or pictures of the Ten Commandments that are visible to the public and to cut off the microphones of public school students thanking God in their valedictory speeches and to forbid school si kids to sing Christmas carols. At Obama's campaign stops, his liberal friends chanted that he is the one we've been waiting for. As soon as he moved into the White House, Obama began his long series of words and actions to secularize our country. He's trying to make the U.S. a totally secular nation. The goal was predictable when he was campaigning in San Francisco before he was elected. Here are Obama's insulting words about religious people in the United States. He said they get bitter, they cling to guns or religion, or antipathy to people who are not like them, who are anti-immigrant or anti-trade, as a way to explain their frustrations. Obama looks down on religious people. Obama has a record of hostility to religion that we have never before seen in any American president. One of his first executive orders in January 2009 was to reverse the practice of the Bush administration and start giving taxpayer money to organizations that perform abortions in other countries. In February 2009, he announced the elimination of conscience protections that allowed pro-life doctors and nurses in federally funded hospitals to opt out of performing abortions. In April 2009, Obama delivered a speech at Georgetown University only after his staff had pressured the Catholic College to cover up the monogram for the name of Jesus that was always displayed above the podium. The next thing we noticed was that when President Obama recites the Declaration of Independence, he changes the wording. When he quotes the Great Declaration, he censors out the word creator. We all know that the Declaration proclaims that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. And again and again, when Obama recites this line, he omits the word creator. Obama has done this so often that it cannot be a slip of the tongue or a glitch of the teleprompter. It's deliberate. 
He changing the words of the Declaration of Independence as part of his determination to remove everything religious and every mention of God from every aspect of our public life. Obama canceled the traditional White House event honoring the National Day of Prayer, saying he would pray only in private. In a November 2010 speech, Obama pretended to quote the U.S. national motto, which is, In God We Trust. I guess he couldn't bring himself to say God, so he mistakenly said our official motto is E Pluribus Unum. When Obama gave the traditional presidential Thanksgiving Day address in 2011, he again failed to mention God. It wasn't clear who he was thanking on this uniquely American holiday, but it certainly was not God. The U.S. Constitution makes it a prime duty of the president to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And we all saw Obama at his inauguration swear an oath to uphold the laws of the United States. But apparently Obama thinks he can pick and choose which laws to enforce and which he can overturn. In February 2011, Obama instructed his Justice Department not to defend the, the, the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, known as DOMA, which was overwhelmingly passed by a bipartisan Congress, but is now under attack in the federal courts by the homosexual activists trying to get supremacist judges to declare it unconstitutional. In September 2011, Obama, who was determined to defy the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, ordered the Pentagon to authorize the performance of same-sex marriage ceremonies on military bases, thus violating not only the federal law, but also the traditional First Amendment rights that have always been accorded to military chaplains. Barack Obama must think that his title of Commander-in-Chief enables him to banish religion from the U.S. military. In July 2011, Obama's Department of Veterans Affairs banned any mention of Jesus Christ during the burials at Houston National Cemetery. Hundreds of demonstrators turned out on Independence Day to protest and to support a lawsuit against that ban. After that, the ban was lifted. In September 2011, the U.S. Army issued guidelines for Walter Reed Hospital that read, no religious items such as Bibles and reading materials are allowed to be given away or used during a visit. The hospital rescinded that policy only after Congressman Steve King reported it to the House of Representatives. Steve King said, this order means you cannot bring in a Bible and read from it when you visit your son in the veteran's hospital. It means a priest coming to visit a veteran on his deathbed could not offer the last rites. This is outrageous. Well, the, the Walter Reed Hospital officials were embarrassed and they did cancel that policy. In February 2012, responding to complaints from atheists, the Air Force removed the Latin word for God, Dei, from the logo of the Rapid Capabilities Office and also removed the motto, written in Latin, which means doing God's work with other people's money. The new logo says, doing miracles with other people's money. In February 2012, the U.S. Army warned Catholic chaplains not to read from an archbishop's letter opposing the Obama administration's mandate that all employers, including religious hospitals, schools, and colleges, must pay for abortion drugs, contraceptives, and sterilizations for their employees. Most people found it shocking that an order could be issued telling chaplains that they cannot say to members of their own faith during a religious service. Obama has been trying to load the federal courts with anti-religious judges. His first appointment to the federal judiciary was David Hamilton, and alas, he is typical. He had worked for ACORN and for Indiana's ACLU. He was known for blocking pro-life and pro-decency laws. Even the left-leaning American Bar Association called him not qualified. In 2005, when Hamilton was a federal district court judge, he banned a prayer used in the Indiana legislature that mentioned Jesus Christ. 
and he ordered the Indiana legislature to refrain from using Christ's name or title or any denominational appeal.